that very moment I found the one and my life had found its missing piece So as long as I live I loved you We'll have and hold you Hello everybody and welcome to our viewers subscribers from around the world uh, we're so um, happy you're joining us and you've been following us on our trip to the um, Philippines for three months that yeah was, yeah yeah it took uh, about three months to really get acclimated to the place and now we're back here in the States trying to get reacclimated to this place mm -hmm. so uh, it's been uh, uh, fun and now I think we're finally at the point where we can sit down and do what we want to do here we've been wanting to get these our uh, pros and cons of Dumaguete uh, out there and and this is based on um, solely on our uh, stay over there and uh, Dumaguete area we were there about two and a half months total and another uh, two 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 weeks in uh, Cebu and Bahol and uh, we're just going to give you our impressions of what we saw and uh, if we were to go back again and spend more time, we may have different list of pros and cons. Yeah, you guys don't get offended whatever we say over here because this is just our um, uh, impression in Dumaguite. So if you go over there by yourselves, you will notice it by yourself too, your pros and cons. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to have about 10 pros and about 10 cons, and we're going to mix it up a little bit because, uh, but uh, Maurice has decided she wants to do the pros, and so <laughs> I get to be the bad guy and do the cons, <laughs> but um, we'll just see how this goes, and uh, hopefully uh, it's, it's uh, informative uh, and uh, realistic and be helpful for um, anyone tra uh, traveling over to the Philippines and uh, specifically over to Dumaguete and uh, that whole area, Negros uh, Oriental. And Negros is very is is pretty large, and so we only uh, saw a portion of it. So once again, you know, this is a kind of a narrow uh, uh, view of it from just from what we saw in uh, Dumaguete, Bacong, Brown, San Bukita areas. So that's it. Um, and so here we go. Let's go and start off with the you. Okay. All right. This is the positive thing. Fewer storms, most storms stay south towards Cebu and Manila. Yes, and I, I think that's uh, interesting because uh, I, would, I used to, uh, when I was over there, would look at the weather report almost every day, uh, and it would show that there'd be um, storms, thunderstorms, lightning, and 100% or 90% chance of rain. And then, um, but in, in uh, our area, and where we're, we're in mostly uh, Bakong, uh, it would be a beautiful day. It would be a little cloudy in the morning and be a beautiful day and no rain, nothing. And uh, that went on for weeks. And uh, uh, the locals told me uh, that uh, that's really common, that uh, the, the most of the bad weather that you read about or see on the satellite uh, pictures uh, does stay towards uh, Cebu and Bahol and uh, Manila. Yep, so that's where the rainfall uh, mostly hits. However, uh, Bacong, uh, Valencia, Dumaguete is prone to major, major flooding. Okay, that's a con. That's one of the um, aspects you have to realize exists there. And it could be a devastating flooding that occurs. Uh, there was just major flooding there uh, a week ago. Um, and um, it took out a bridge completely. And it, and it took out, uh, it covered another bridge and blocked off traffic on both bridges so that people couldn't get home. Uh, there's been big um, typhoons that have just wiped out uh, Valencia. Uh, in the past, uh, a couple of years, was it two or three years ago? What was, I don't remember the Sindong. name of it. Sindong, Sindong. Is that the name of it? Yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, it, uh, it just, um, just uh, wiped out the place. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it does get major flooding, so that's uh, a con. But um, like uh, on the plus side, it does get uh, mostly good weather most of the time. Okay, another pro. Color weather, Valencia higher elevation. Yeah, they have that. That's uh, pretty famous. Uh, Valencia is famous for cooler weather. Yeah. And uh, uh, as soon as we arrived in Dumaguete, uh, I noticed that the weather was cooler than it had been in Bahol. And it just felt different. It has a nice, uh, real nice feel down there. Uh, when even when the locals were telling me how hot it was, 
in, in Dumaguete, um, I felt I felt pretty good. Although I have to admit that I lost about 18, 20 pounds over there, mm -hmm. uh, just from being in eating eating the diet, uh, eating less. Uh, sweating a lot more and uh, being there longer than I'd ever been to the Philippines. That was my longest trip, three months. So by the end of it all, I'm, I'm down to 200 pounds. I'm almost down to my high school or college weight, which was uh, 190 pounds. So uh, a lot of, uh, there's some people asked if I was okay, but it's just that <laughs> I think I sweated off about uh, a pound a day, just about. So that's, yeah. for, that's for real. Early morning, he's already sweating. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be <laughs> just drenching, sweating, and I uh, had to uh, put towels down, and uh, it's, it's something. It's, but you know, it, it, uh, in the end, it feels really good, and I feel really uh, healthier than I ever have felt. So uh, um, it, is, it is cooler there in Valencia, you know, and get up in the mountains there, it's cooler as well. So that's mm -hmm. a positive. Um, well, I'd say uh, on the con side that uh, I observed as being a, a big factor was that there's no meter taxis. And um, and that forces you to pretty much go with the uh, tricycles as your option most of the time, and um, and and th those prices are kind of roughly set by the community, uh, the taxi drivers. You know, you get to they're pretty much established the price is what it is to go from one area to another. Uh, but some of the ta the uh, tricycle drivers, they can try to overcharge you, and they've did it, done it to us a few times. I just told them I'm walking, and then I'd wait for another taxi and get the price I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I don't like the fact that there's no meter taxis, and yeah. you know it's it's a it's a big security issue too because uh, you know there there is a big safety issue with the tricycles. Yeah, it should be so nice if you have meter taxi over there. Okay, another pros oh, is. Pro. Excellent local fruits and vegetables when in season. Yeah, the, when we arrived, they were still in full season, so we got all the, the uh, great fruits that we uh, wanted. Uh, the prices were uh, lower when we arrived, and uh, towards the end of our stay, the prices had almost doubled. So because it was becoming uh, the end of the season for the mangoes, and yeah. uh, even it was hard to find um, good avocados at the end. Um, but they were... There was all that dragon fruit that was really great. And all the, what's that other fruit that you like? Uh, remember that? Lanchonis. Yeah, lanchonis. I love it. It's really, really yummy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay, well, one of the um, cons uh, is the brownouts. Okay, and you get those throughout the Philippines. Um, uh, Bahol gets them. Uh, there are a lot of regions that get it. Regions that get it. Um, but over in Bacong, there are a lot of, fr there's frequent brownouts. And um, at least weekly, there'll be one, right? And mm -hmm. then uh, some of them uh, go all day. Uh, we did a video on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, some of them, um, you get a lot of 15 minute brownouts in the evening. <laughs> Uh, but so if you come, try to get you one of those security lamps uh, that are made uh, LED and, uh, and they're really great. They, they pop up and they light up and they run off AA batteries. I saw some of them and I brought, brought one over to your family from my twin brother Jim. Mm -hmm. And next time we go over, we're going to bring a box of them, like about uh, eight or ten of them or so if, we, mm -hmm. if we can get them over. Yeah, those are yeah. very nice. Because when it's, when it's a brownout, it's, it's totally black. There's no security. I mean, there's, you have no security lights. So that can be a little eerie if you're in a place that, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't have a full-time security guard and the like. So uh, beware of that when you come there. Bring, bring at least some good flashlight, LED flashlights uh, mm -hmm. you know, or something so you have something there with yeah. AA batteries. Um, okay, of course you could buy that in here, but it would be uh, better if you can get a better one probably in the States. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. or wherever okay. you're coming from. Another pro. Fun water parks like Bambolo, Tejero, Ocean 12, Forest Camp. Yeah, and those are just the four that we know about. I know there's uh, probably a, a more of them. You can easily, you know, check that out. But we we uh, looked at a, we went to a couple of them. And, we uh, like Bambolo. We we went there a few times, and Tejero. It's nice also. It's uh, kids friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, then it's easy. It's close to uh, Bakong, which is closer to Dumaguete. But we went in Bambolo a lot, so. Yeah, yeah. we we get, we got kind of accustomed to that one. Yeah. Um, Brianna. Brianna really likes Bambolo because they have this uh, 
kids fall that she really likes over there. Yeah, it's really good for yeah. if you have kids. Yeah. Yeah, and, re and what I like too is it's got nice lounge chairs. Uh, it's very comfortable and a good seating and yeah, just real nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give you a con now. Uh, go back to the the uh, tricycles. It's extremely uh, uh, dangerous. Uh, an unsafe driving and it's true that you have that throughout the Philippines uh, worse in some places than others but the fact that uh, being that there are no meter taxis in Dumaguete makes it even worse uh, because now you're forced to ride in these tricycles and um, there are um, uh, s probably several at least several accidents a week we saw um, uh, f uh, four accidents while we were there. We got rear-ended mm -hmm. um, in the first one we observed. That was our own. We got rear-ended. Yeah, we have a video about it. Yeah, about our getting hit. Yeah. Our tricycle got hit. And uh, th there are no rules. I mean, the, the rules just aren't enforced. Uh, traffic laws, the, the police don't do anything to help uh, regulate the, the traffic. Uh, and, the, and a lot of uh, the drivers uh, uh, of motorcycles and uh, uh, tricycles, they're unregistered uh, vehicles, and not only that, they're unlicensed drivers. So if they hit you, they want to leave as quickly as possible. So um, a lot of locals um, know about this, and they talk about it all the time. So be really uh, wary of those tricycles, and my advice is don't take a tricycle late at night. Um, when we left the uh, left the uh, Dumaguete, Dumaguete um, the morning that we left, our, our tricycle driver, uh, Anthony, uh, told us the night before that at 2 a.m. in the morning, one of his buddies, who's a tricycle driver, uh, was carrying two passengers that were uh, local um, people, um, Filipinas, Filipinos, and uh, they were hit and killed instantly in a very tragic uh, and devastating, I mean, hor hor horrifying uh, accident by a drunk driver in yeah. a car. So the guy in the car survived, mm -hmm. but the but the, the passengers it split it split the uh, tricycle apart from the carriage, yeah. and it was just a horrifying accident, yeah. and it happened at two in the morning. So uh, we we personally don't go out and we stay out late when we're over there. Yeah, and mostly because the people at night, like two a.m. in the morning, they're drunk. They're from the yeah. bar, so watch out traveling at night. No. Yeah. Big issue. So be safe that way. Then you really protect. You're going to probably have to ride in the tricycles, but your safest bets during the day. Yeah. But there are lots of accidents too during the day. We saw motorcycles uh, on their sides. Mm -hmm. We saw late, another accident where the lady was laid out in the street, bleeding unconscious, and um, and the drivers drive all over the street any way what they want. Uh, so I don't want to belabor it, but that's I am belaboring it because it's really tragic, and it's a serious uh, negative uh, that they really got to get it get it together and start uh, providing some safety for people. Okay, another pro is impressive outdoor markets, Tumagite, Valencia, Sambuagita, etc. Oh, I really enjoyed the Zambugita uh, market yeah. because they had uh, everything right there. It was just really, it was a big market. They sold live cattle, um, chickens, anything you want to barter, I mean not barter, but buy. Uh, they every Wednesday, like every Wednesday. Every every Wednesday, it's like a yeah. big flea, like a flea market slash uh, fruit market, mm -hmm. vegetables. Fish. Uh, all fresh fish. Oh yeah, there. fresh fish out of the uh, fresh fish. Uh, it's just, and everybody knows about it, it's really crowded, Yeah. really, really uh, fun. Um, and uh, oh, and right there is uh, the same place you can catch a boat if you want to take a day trip out to Apple uh, Apple Island. Mm -hmm. You can go out there, and I think you can also go to Sikihor. Yeah, throw there also. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's that's a big positive. Uh, and it's it's safe also because there's a lot of police over there because they know that it's a lot of foreigners came in over there for the uh, live markets. Yeah, and foreigners. Yeah. Everybody loves it. I mean, it's <laughs> it's ninety. 99 percent locals and uh, one percent foreigners i mean there's you know mm -hmm. it's all it's all your people your yeah. people yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. they know where to shop it's really a great place and i love it yeah. and dumaguete has got the real nice uh, markets and and we didn't go the other side of dumaguete but i hear there's up there there's lots of markets and things so mm -hmm. you know we're, we're only sharing with what we know we don't we know very little from just being there three months mm -hmm. two and a half months mm -hmm. whatever Okay, so where are we? Are we ready for a, po uh, a negative? Okay, <laughs> oh, here's a con. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. <sighs> okay, um, Bakong, okay, which is right next to Dumaguete. And um, we, we talk about them as almost sort of the same place, but they're not. Uh, in 1837, Bakong separated itself and became its own town from Dumaguete. But they were connected as one town at one t uh, point in time. So when, when I talk about Bakong, I, I uh, you know, it's so it's it is right there next to Dumaguete, so they're actually almost the same. But there, we, we you would when you're driving the national highway there, um, and you smell this uh, foul odors along the way at different places, and it's usually because of stuff in the the drainage dish ditches or one thing or another is going on. But some of the smells can be pretty foul, and we we observe like uh, the draining dish ditch going into the ocean there in Bakong, uh, just filled with. Uh, trash and water was running into the ocean and uh, children and, and families were swimming locals the Filipinos were swimming in the waters nearby there so I would say um, that's a negative and a real reason to, to wear those masks and as one of the uh, 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 our subscribers pointed out to me is that when you wear the mask make sure you get the blue side out that's correct I looked it up so uh, yeah wear those masks and uh, get used to them and don't be bashful I think they're really important mm -hmm. yeah so we definitely and uh, you know what I never got I didn't get sick one time after wearing that mask mm -hmm. and I got sick uh, we were all re very sick there for a while in the very beginning okay another pro Easy access to boats to Sikihor, Napo Islands, Cuba, snorkel, day trips, and overnight. Yeah, so if you go into uh, Dumaguete to uh, Harold's Mansion, uh, that's um, very popular, a very popular um, dive shop that you can uh, book your reservation to the islands over there, where, wherever you want to go. Um, Sikihor or Apo or whatever um, and they have all the scuba gear or snorkeling gear and all that uh, that's just one and they're very popular and have a good reputation and the best prices um, however we stayed at Kakisa Dive Resort and mm -hmm. they can arrange it also and there are numerous dive resorts that you can stay at um, along the the, uh, the beaches there and uh, down to Dowan and beyond so um, yeah Puerto Vida they'll they'll book those um, same trips mm -hmm. uh, Mike's dive shop they'll book the same trips and there's there's so many of them so that's really uh, really neat okay here's a con hospitals hospitals okay my experience with the, um, an observation of the hospitals are um, in uh, Dowan Marine Sanctuary uh, in that area that uh, that little clinic uh, down Mar Dowan Marine Clinic they call it uh, was uh, not very professional and not very good and not very equipped to take care of what I needed and I just needed them to check out my ears and wash out my ears and uh, they're very disorganized they kept telling me things that were untrue and different and then they tell me something else so they said they could uh, do the job and wash it out and then they they couldn't do it and they couldn't help me out and then they took my money anyway and then I went over to um, uh, was it um, uh, Holy Child uh, Hospital to check it out just to see what it was like and it looked very very unsanitary and uh, disorganized and and uh, I didn't feel at all confident with that so my my impressions are uh, that um, we didn't uh, on the we did not go to I did not check out Silliman Okay, Silliman may be better. Um, you guys are gonna have to check that one out for yourself, but I've heard it's better. Uh, all I can say is our experience with the hospitals in the Philippines in Cebu have been very good. So I think that uh, Dumaguete and, and Negros has got a lot of catching up to do. That's all I'll say about that. So how about a nice happy pro? Okay, and another happy pro is Good dive resorts, day passes, and reasonable food prices. Yeah, you can spend your whole vacation just staying at the dive resorts. We spent about, uh, I think we spent the first two and a half weeks or something like that at... Uh, Kakisa. Yeah. yeah, and we just loved it. It was a great place to stay. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you talk to them, uh, uh, off you, maybe off you a uh, weekly rate. Uh, which is is very reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, you can order your food there. You can. Um, it's 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 got. Oh, and it has a backup generator. So if there is a brownout, uh, yes. they can take care of that for you. The owners are um, really uh, nice and uh, 
just a, it's a nice, pleasant place. We really enjoyed that place. And they have right? security guard too at night, so it's uh, safe over there. Right, and they do have a security guard. Yeah. So the dive resorts, and, and uh, there are numerous ones. Uh, you can just get, you can go to any of them and uh, get a day pass, and mm -hmm. it's only it ranges from um, I forget like. Uh, somewhere around 300 pesos and uh, well they really vary a lot but they're not very expensive um, how much was uh, Pura Vida day pass Pura for Vida all, I think for all of us it was like 200 pesos 200 each. 200 pesos each and we are like four so we end up uh, being 800 pesos yeah and that's about yeah. 16 dollars and and uh, all that money is uh, uh, applies it's uh, consumable they call it mm -hmm. so you can use that to buy food your lunch with so you know you could buy 16 dollars with the free food I oh, mean, yeah. basically the free the food's free and they have very um, good service mm -hmm. in our experience um, nice beautiful lounge chairs and beach and nice you, see, beach, you see in yeah. our videos it's just such a pleasant place we like it and we enjoyed it Yep, and yeah. right next to Puerto Vida was Mike's uh, Mike's uh, dive resort, and so there's uh, you can s and they have also overnights. You know they have nice uh, hotel rooms there, so that's really a fun thing, and uh, there are many as I say to mm -hmm. choose from. So you can just uh, go to those for the day and just just have a ball. They're easy, mm -hmm. easy access. Yeah. Yeah, we just took a tricycle over, or you can take a, a, tri a series bus over, uh, and they're faster. They pretty much run everybody off the road, yeah. series buses. and Or you can take a um, little mini, uh, one of those jeepneys over from wherever you are. So uh, I say that's a big positive. This one has more to do with, uh, with Bakong, I think. Um, and it may apply to Dumaguete as well. But one of the things uh, the new President Duterte has uh, declared and decreed these uh, rules, uh, laws, that there'd be no um, karaoke after 10 p.m., you have to be quiet after 10 p.m., you can't uh, be loud and obnoxious uh, late at night, all night long. Um, you ha there's no uh, urinating in the street, men, men uh, just pulled and just decided to turn their back to the highway and take a urinate in the street, uh, in, the si in the bushes, I should say. Um, we've seen them do it on the piers and uh, on the Coke bottles. I saw that in, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, some of the places. But uh, So that's, um, they're very defiant, I would say. Um, and uh, they, they don't really want to follow the rules. So um, we had uh, loud neighbors on uh, both sides of us and, and uh, even a govern government agency um, had a big uh, party at um, the tree house which is a big which is one of those day resorts and they were up singing karaoke all night long till uh, five in the morning and then when I complained to the police department the next day and uh, they said oh that was the government uh, officials having a party all night you know or, uh, and so I, I decided that wasn't worth pursuing so I would say that they are very defiant and uh, independent and uh, you have to remember you know they're very very uh, still somewhat tribal because uh, I mean all the Philippines is an originally tribal and even Bra uh, Marisa you were a Boholana princess you're a tribal Oh, You're yeah. a Boholana girl. I don't know why they don't follow the rules that my family in uh, the village, everybody over there is following the rules that karaoke will be off at uh, nine or 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. So my mom, when somebody wants to do karaoke, my mom said, no, I have to turn this off because it's 10 o'clock already. Mm -hmm. So it'll be quiet at 10 o'clock over there. And it's a small village, so they should be following the rules. It would sure be a lot more pleasant if they did. It's, I would say it's very lawless, um, and it's something that uh, you have to be uh, ready for. And, uh, you know, you know yeah. maybe it's just good to spend uh, a few weeks there and see how you like it. Yeah. And yeah. see if you can, can deal with it and, and uh, get along and oh, stew you, up. You will, you will like it. Still. Yeah, it is, it is a lot of fun, I'll say yeah. that. And it's a lot of pleasant things about it. Uh, even though there's some crazy stuff too. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you will still get these uh, pros and cons. So not oh, only in Dumaguete. I could do a pros, a pros and cons list about Nevada here. I Reno. can do right in America. This, uh, America has got crazy people that are out of their minds and angry and not even happy. Okay. At least in the Philippines, people are happy. 
Yeah, the people in Philippines are always happy, smiling, even if they don't have any money, but they're just happy and they have their family, they love yep. each other, so that's a very good thing right there. Yeah. So even if they're a poor country in Philippines, I love it over there. Mm. Yeah. So what, I think it's ready for a pro. Okay, pro. Short ride to Darwin, clean waters and beaches, and marine sanctuaries. Oh, okay, well, we kind of talked about it. So Darwin is... Uh, is uh, right next to uh, uh, Bakong, and which is next to Dumaguete, and uh, it's an easy, easy uh, tricycle ride, like I, I mentioned there. And the water is much cleaner there, um, and the beaches are pretty, so um, it's really nice. And there's a lot of uh, coral reefs that you can uh, s uh, scuba dive or snorkel, and uh, just spend the day playing in the water. It just re and the water, of course, is always warm, and uh, and very clean. Okay, well, it looks like it's my turn to do a con, but I uh, kind of ran two of them together, so I think it's, you want you to do another pro to catch up. Okay, Silliman University for College Studies and Cheap Tuition. It's right there in Dumaguete, in the heart of the city. It's uh, easy access uh, to uh, everything. It's uh, not far from the pier where the boats come in. Um, I'd say if you're going to university there, it's like a, a college town. You can walk everywhere really easily, and it's very inexpensive. And I think there's uh, students from out, out of the country that, that come to Silliman to go to school, and uh, they can become a uh, doctor or, um, you know, or any kind of lawyer or whatever you want to be and uh, pay a fraction of the tuition in the States. And I think that some people are wise to that in the States and uh, are graduating without any student loans mm -hmm. at Silliman. So I would look into that if I was a student and wanted to do some traveling and have some fun and get a college degree and be debt free. How mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. That's a big positive and I think it's really worth looking into for um, foreigners. <laughs> All right, it's my turn for the final con uh, for our list. And uh, it's this phrase, life is cheap. And I heard that several times while I, while I was, uh, we were over there. And uh, the f mostly, actually I heard this from foreigners. Uh, and they, uh, were, what they meant by that was that uh, uh, you have to be careful with the Filipinos because of Pinoy pride. And they're very proud people. And they will retaliate if you offend their pride. Um, I mean, not, I don't think they'll always retaliate, but many times they would and I wouldn't press it because um, for them, um, you know, if, if you do something that really offends them, that um, they, they can uh, pay someone 5,000 pesos and have you killed, and that's about 100 bucks. And that's what, I've heard that from a few people over there. So um, we're pretty polite and, and, uh, to them anyway, and except for when they're on loud all night and they're partying, mm -hmm. might ask them to, to turn it down. But you have to be careful about that over there and, and just remember that they are uh, very tribal and uh, they're very nice people, but it's not a good idea to piss them off. Um, and, uh, uh, it's, yeah, uh, because I heard about this story in Manila that there's a family over there. Mm -hmm. And the mom tried to uh, uh, say something to the neighbor, all like three guys, something. And the three guys don't like it, so they get drunk at the night and they climb up to their house like uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, something, and they kill all the family because they're all drunk because uh, they get their, they have their pride. Mm -hmm. So that's what, what happened. So I'm kind of scared when uh, he tried to kind of say them politely, but I know that people are there drunk already so i'm kind of scared because when they get drunk like that it gets hot so they want to say like the pride they're gonna say let's go kill this especially white person so yeah, that's kind of why i'm person. scared so yeah if, so, you, know, you have to be careful so about just, it. just be careful yeah that's and if all. you look you look back at philippine history it's uh it's uh, fascinating it kind of re tells you and kind of uh, uh, how, how the people are very strong-willed you know it's like when Magellan t tried to colonize the Philippines and uh, Mactan Island uh, back in 1521 he was killed by King Lapu Lapu mm -hmm. and the tribal people are the ones that killed him you know so um, uh, that, that he, he didn't feel like being colonized that day so Magellan died right there and they mm -hmm. built a statue to him mm -hmm. so um, they are tribal they're they're um, very um, Mm, very intent 
But 99% they are all nice over there. So yeah, it, only when they get drunk. One yeah. person when they get drunk, they get crazy. Or they do that shamu, shabu, shabu, shabu drug. Yeah, but mostly, mostly example the day they do bad things, and when they're not drunk anymore, they sing a song. They tell the truth that they do this, they do that. So. Yeah, they're very honest people. It's yeah. like they, if they're funny, like uh, Americans when they commit a crime, they'll take that and they'll they'll and they'll deny it later. They'll take that lie to their grave. But the Filipinos, they, they're honest. They can't take it. Yeah. They can do something bad, bad to someone or kill someone or uh, rob them or whatever. And uh, a couple of days later, they either turn themselves in or they, they, they sing. <laughs> yeah, so my <laughs> advice is just don't get yeah. drunk too much. Yeah. Oh, well, just that's to the Filipinos? Yeah. Oh, you're talking to your people. It, my, I'm talking to my people. Don't get drunk too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Well, that's good <laughs> advice to everybody. Okay, another pro in Philippines. Mostly the people over there are friendly, strong family bonds, and sense of community, and they speak some English, which is appealing. Yeah, that's something very uh, prevalent in, uh, obvious in uh, Dumaguete and uh, area. People are very family oriented, aren't they? Oh yeah, they like uh, to be together in birthday party, mm -hmm. and weekends, like in their um, day off? Yeah. Uh, there, well, there seems to be one fiesta after another. And uh, they love, or one birthday party, or a wedding, or anniversary. It's uh, party, 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 party. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Lechon, 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 Lechon. I would not want to be a pig in the Philippines. <laughs> oh boy, they, they go through a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but that's true throughout the Philippines, so. Um, what else was I going to say? The low rents, mm -hmm. the low rents uh, in in New Baghetti. Uh You can actually go there and save money. You can there, you know, take your uh, pension from wherever country you're at in your retirement and mm -hmm. and live there. And uh, you'll have to do without some of the creature comforts you might be used to in the, your country, but you can save money. Yeah, you can live easy over there and you save your money. And you can have. Uh, um, a lot of fun and uh, there's always someone to talk to mm -hmm. uh, people are very open and welcoming and friendly yeah they're very friendly over there even if they don't know you during that fiesta in Bakong John and me are walking we're going to the uh, fish market in the time and there's the woman uh, she inviting us to go to their house because it, it's mm -hmm. fiesta on that day remember that mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely one fiesta after another. And uh, the cool thing about Dumaguete, too, is the boardwalk and all the restaurants along there. And that's where they gather for the, a lot of the, the big major fiestas and uh, they right there in Dumaguete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, in fact, that the last one there is the one that that uh, tricycle accident happened with that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, a lot of action over there. People get together and meet up. Yeah. But... Uh, it's popular so we like it we go back again for a visit oh yeah we're already talking to go back over there again <laughs> yeah well it's funny after being here for just a few days um, honestly there's nothing that I mean other than the food that I missed um, and a couple little creature comforts I really um, don't nothing here really appeals to me anymore yeah I guess I'm changing or something Maybe I just want something better out of life. When we're we gonna, or something else out of life. When we're we gonna go back? I don't know. Tomorrow. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Brianna has to get her uh, passport, and we got a few things to do. Okay, guys, hope that helps, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye, bye, everybody. Okay, see you next okay. video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Not sure if you know this, but when we first. Uh, it's uh, what can you say about it? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Did, did that help? Um, are very wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Bria. Thank you. Thank you, darling.
as time passes, my love is endless. And with this ring, I say to the world, you're my every reason.